Hey, what's up guys? Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market is still going through some turbulence. In this video, we'll take a look at why Bitcoin could be in danger in the short term, then Max Kaiser will explain why his Bitcoin price target of $220,000 for 2021 is still intact. As always, let's start with the cryptocurrency market. As a whole, crypto market it currently consists of slightly over $1.5 trillion. Bitcoin's dominance is at around 43%, and Ethereum dominance stays strong above 18%. Crypto currently experience another day in red. Everything seems to be trending downwards, from Bitcoin to smaller altcoins. As of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is down to this current price of $35,000. It's down by 4.2% from yesterday. On the week, it's also down by 6%. Current Bitcoin's market cap dropped till this $650 billion. Ethereum is still trading slightly over $2,400. Recent low was at around $1,900. Let's see if the price will fall there once again. Definitely great buying opportunity. So far, Ethereum is down by 5% of the day and of the week it's surprisingly quite strong. Even if we compare it to Bitcoin, it's flat in the past 7 days. Binance BNB is the second type cryptocurrency that is flat on the week, while everything else is in red. Cardano ADA is down to $1.46, is down by 5% of the day as well as on the week. Ripple XRP is under a dollar, is down by double digits on the week, by 13% to be more exact. The parent company Ripple is planning to go through IPO after finishing with SEC lawsuits. Why would Garland House want to go public to raise more money? I am sure selling software to banks isn't that cost intensive. Dogecoin is down quite a bit as well, currently it is just 30 cents, it's already down by 60% from its all time high. On the day it's average, but on the week it's down by 14%. Not sure people who bought at 70 cents will see some profits anytime soon. ICP is currently still in the top 10 cryptocurrencies, it's about to get flipped by Uniswap. ICP is the biggest loser in the week, it's down by almost 22%. Globant Invest in Cryptocurrencies Or should we say, Bitcoin. Globant, a software tech giant unicorn based in Argentina, has joined a select group of companies that are currently invested in cryptocurrencies, according to its latest filing with SAC. The company founded in 2003 reported the purchase of $500,000 in Bitcoin during the first quarter of 2021, a small sum for the company with a valuation of more than 6.5 billion bucks. However, despite this recent price drop, the adoption of Bitcoin continues to grow. Now, let's take a quick look at the Bitcoin price action. Currently, Bitcoin is dipping, as I mentioned earlier. It's currently below $35,000. We have some support line at around $30,000. If it breaks $30,000, then possibly next support line would be below $20,000. If Bitcoin drops till $20,000, I will be aggressively buying. I still have a good chunk of cash plus stocks. I might liquidate all my stocks and possibly buy Bitcoin and Ethereum and those lower levels. If BTC drops till $20,000, that would be 70% drop from an all time high. I do not know if this will happen, but if it will, I am prepared to expand my crypto inventory. The lowest Bitcoin drop in the bear market was 86% back in 2015. If this time we will see another 86% drop, the price would decline till $10,000. I am not saying this will happen, but there is always a small possibility for the worst case scenario. Imagine buying Bitcoin again at $10,000? I was actually buying Bitcoin in that price range back in September 2020. Current fear and greed index hit new record low. Extreme fear currently is at 18. The lower the fear and greed index is, the better the buying opportunity. According to this chart, around 70% of all short-term Bitcoin holders or traders are currently at loss. Of course, when Bitcoin was wiggling near its all-time high, there was almost no losses. But now we see massive spike in loss to 4 million BTC as market took a hit by 50% or so. By getting wrecked, maybe short-term investors will turn into the long-term investors. If you bought Bitcoin at $65,000, then what the hell should you do? In my opinion, you should not sell. You already lost near 50% of all your initial investment. In few years, Bitcoin will be much higher than $65,000. But it takes long-term vision and patience. Without those two elements, you're not going anywhere.
Here is another cool chart that represents how no coiners aka newbies buy Bitcoin. They are currently buying this dip, which is a good thing. I just do not know if they have the stomach to forestand the volatility. No coiners also piled in before 2017 bull market run. That was the perfect time to buy Bitcoin. But even more no coiners piled in at the peak of 2017 bull market run. That was the terrible to buy Bitcoin. This is when all of them got wrecked if they do not have long term vision. Now we also have a massive spike in no coiners buying this dip. Here is a million dollar question. Is this is something similar to the beginning of 2017 bull market run or to the end of 2017 bull market run? Personally, I do not think this is the end of the bull market. We did not have that blow of top spike like we did in all previous bull markets. We had blow of top twice in 2013 bull market as well as 2017 bull market. Now it seems like it's some sort of capitulation phase. Let's shift gear a bit and take a look at this video where Max Kaiser explains why his $220,000 Bitcoin price target is still not off the table for this cycle. Let's take a look. I love the Michael Saylor shirt, which we touched on before. Um, you know, he's sort of definitely set a high bar for institutional adoption, right? I mean, the guy is as all in as you can imagine with a corporation raising debt, you know, a billion dollars worth of debt more than once. Um, do you think that that's a path we can expect to see from other corporations? Or do you think that we'll get a whole lot more Elon Musk's who some, somewhat view it as, uh, you know, a, a treasury asset, but also a profitable asset and maybe one that they'd be willing to part with if the situation arose? Well, the, um, you know, with, with, with Elon Musk, first of all, his stock was outperforming Bitcoin. So he's kind of in a unique situation. Tesla stock has been a skyrocket. So that gives him an interesting position in corporate America. Probably unique in that respect, in that his actual underlying company stock was outperforming this asset that's been compounding at 200% a year. So I think he's really an anomaly and you can't really use him as a benchmark. So then, okay, let's look at the market as a whole. You have, um, the problem, as Michael Saylor articulates it, is one of loss of purchasing power on your cash reserves, which he estimates to be approximately 15% a year due to the M M1 money supply, sure. other money supply, money printing, expanding at approximately 15% a year or more. So a couple of things. First of all, What's the main competitor to Bitcoin in corporate America? It's borrowing money to buy back your own stock. That's how executives make money in America today. They don't manufacture, they don't produce, they don't hire people and give them living wages. They borrow from the Fed at 0% and buy back their own stock. And so their executive stock options go from a dollar to $20. So their compensation is, is 50, 60, 70 million or 100 million or $200 million. So that's how they engineer that by gaming the system, by gaming the central bank. And the central bank is in on the con because they claim that there's no inflation. So we can't raise interest rates, even though it's provable and demonstrable that there is a lots of inflation and they should be raising interest rates, but because they are in working together with these corporations and banks to keep rates low, they must say that there's no inflation, or in fact, they even say there's deflation. So um, Michael Saylor called time on this. He called them out. He said, wait a minute, I could borrow money to buy back my own stock, but I think that these central banks are printing us into ruination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that borrowed money. I'm going to take the cash in my balance sheet and I'm going to borrow at less than 1%. And I'm going to buy this asset that is a bulwark against the inflation. It's going to go up. It's already, it's moving up 200% a year, but at a minimum, it's going to outperform inflation by a substantial margin. And, and so then that is something that every CFO in the country and in the world now cannot ignore because otherwise they open themselves up to shareholder, shareholder lawsuits. So he's thrown down the gauntlet. And now every CFO and every CEO and, and, and every board member of every public company now has to take that on board by law. 
It's not something they can decide not to do. They have a legal responsibility. So, and, and then when you put pencil to paper and you work through the math, they're, they're going to say, wait a minute, you know, this is actually true. Um, we should actually be doing this or we're going to be sued out of existence by our shareholders. So um, they, of course, would like to delay making that choice for as long as they can because um, it's, it's a change of thinking and people are resistance resistant to change. So that's why you see a lot of uh, propaganda. So mainstream media, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, you know, MSNBC, CNN, the, the, the BBC, there's a lot of uh, propaganda. There's a lot of FUD out there about Bitcoin and the environment, but that's completely false. It's pure propaganda. Bitcoin and dirty and, and the use in uh, illicit activity, that's completely provably false. Uh, you know, but this is, they're very used to getting their way with propaganda. Remember, the Iraq war was, uh, was, was sold on this idea of weapons of mass destruction Just and, uh, you know, a little vial of talcum powder, you know, shaken at the UN and saying, look, this is uh, really deadly stuff I'm holding here. You know, I just poured it out of my Johnson and Johnson cage. baby powder, but yeah. trust me, it's it's really really dangerous, you know. And so we, so propaganda really is impactful these days because of the control of media by just a very very few players, and those few players are beholden to the money printers. So um, it's it's tough for corporations to go against it, um, and. Um, yeah, I think that's what the, the whole uh, Elon Musk on Saturday Night Live was about. You know, Mike, Lauren Michaels, who's the producer, he, he's very tight, obviously, with Comcast. And Comcast is a major corporate conglomerate and monopolist in America. And NBC News and MSNBC News that they own are major propaganda players. And you know, here's a guy who we think will dis distract attention from Bitcoin, which we see as an existential threat. So let's put, let's put this guy who's awkward let's put it that way, in front of millions of people talking about a shit coin. And, you know, we may, we'll buy some time, you know, maybe we'll buy some time. And, but time's up. Um, you know, if you read, you know, Jack Mahler's thread or some of these other threads, you, you realize time is up. They're, they've run out of, uh, they, they, they're reaching into the trick bag and they're finding nothing in the trick bag. They're, they've run out of tricks. So when, when corporate America really runs out of, room to finagle and to escape the bitcoin reality you know they've got to they've got to make the move they've got to make the move so um i, I think it happens in 2021 so my price target for 2021 is still two hundred twenty thousand dollars per bitcoin um it's it's an aggressive price target but i, I think, think so. it's ba it's based on us dollar running into severe trouble and institutions realizing that inflation is in fact not transitory it's secular, it's structural, it's here for the long haul. And if you're not protecting yourself, you're going to be wiped out. And as Paul Tudor Jones said about Bitcoin, it's the fastest horse in the race when he's talking, comparing it to gold, for example. And, and so you get this wave, a, a tsunami of cash comes back into Bitcoin. Max nailed it his 2020 Bitcoin price prediction. He predicted that Bitcoin would finish the year at $28,000. And surprisingly, Bitcoin did hit that price target by the end of the year. Now, for 2021, he believes Bitcoin will hit $220,000 sometimes in Q3 or Q4 later this year. Will that happen? Only time will show. Let me know what do you guys think. Can Max Kaiser be correct once again and we will see Bitcoin at $220,000 later this year or not? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.